Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. So we've done this several times before. We figured it's been a few years, so it's time to do it again. What we like to call an okri trial. So we got several different varieties planted out here. We got four kind of open pollinated heirloom varieties, and then four rows of our favorite jambalaya hybrid. And you can see the jambalaya plants are a lot smaller than the other plants. But size ain't always everything. These puppies right here are the main producers in this okra plot right here. We kind of knew the results before we did it, but always good to do it just to prove to ourselves again what we know to be the most productive variety of okra out there. And uh, these things are just starting to produce good, starting to form some okra on these side shoots here, which is when you really start getting some nice harvest. The first few harvests you're just getting everything right off the top there but once they start making some on these side shoots that's when you can harvest a boatload of okra in here we've only been picking this about every three days or so I haven't really gave it a whole lot of water the cool thing about okra is you can push it as hard as you want to if you want it to make a ton you can throw some water to it if you want to slow it down a little bit you can back off the water it's really heat tolerant let me show you our little harvest today like I said, we ain't started getting bucket loads yet. But it won't be long. So, got all these different varieties in here. These long ones here, that's our cow horn okra. You can let it get a lot longer than the other ones. Um, these here is called Silver Queen. First time growing this one, I really like this variety. It stays tender at longer lengths. And the productivity has been decent for an heirloom variety on it. Got a red burgundy down here. And uh, it's probably about tit for tat with that silver queen as far as production goes <clears throat> and then we got the bottom here I picked all these first our main producer the majority of this is this jambalaya here it's just the most productive variety of okra out there but we like growing some of these others too get some neat coloration I forgot to mention this one right here that's the star David that's a good frying okra there because it's nice and wide and uh, just make some big old good pieces for frying but okra trials are going good and uh we'll just get bigger and bigger harvests as we go here throughout the summer and uh we'll have plenty of okra for months to come if you watch a lot of our videos you know we're pretty strong believers in interplanting flowers in our vegetable garden for several different reasons um you know it's going to attract some pollinators going to attract some beneficial insects and then some flowers like these have some natural pest deterrent properties so this right here is a french marigold mix that we carry it's called the marigold sparky mix and you can see there's a little bit of variation in bloom color there some of them are a little more golden colored some of them are more kind of deep orange colored and this has been a great variety for me so far. First time I've grown it. And we grew these from transplants back in early, early spring and planted a double row right here. And foliage has just developed really nicely. Hadn't had to worry about any weeds in here. Just nice, thick little patch of flowers. Now my question is, is will these guys make it through the summer heat? So they seem to be taking it pretty well right now. So I'm not sure if when it gets real, real hot, if these things are gonna suffer a little bit. So this plot right here, I'm getting ready to plant one more round of squash and cucumbers in here. So this bigger space right here, we're gonna plant a row of Lebanese squash, a variety we've got called Alexandria. Then on the other side, there's collards that need picking. We're gonna plant one more row of slicing cucumbers, a variety called Olympian. So if these guys can take the heat, I'm gonna leave them here because I think they're doing a good job. 
and they're just beautiful. But if they can't take the heat, I might just go ahead and mow them down and I might could get two rows of squash in there. So tell me what you guys think. Should I leave them or will the heat just take them out in a few weeks anyway? Love to hear what you guys think. It's time to harvest corn and I want to show you today when that corn is ready and how to harvest it and prepare it for cooking corn on the cob. So what we have here is Hickory King field corn, which is one of my favorite heirloom varieties of field corn. When that corn is ready, you'll see that that silkenut air will turn a dark, dark brown. And that's when we know it's ready to pick. Now on corn, you will get one to two ears off a stalk. Sometimes you will get what we call the primary ear, which would be this one right here. And then you will get a second one down at the bottom right here. And us old timers, we call that the nubbin. The nubbin normally don't fill out near as well as that primary ear does. And the primary ear, most of the time, is above it. Now this ear right here, you can tell, is not quite ready because it's not turned completely brown as this one has. Now here is the primary ear and here's the nubbin. We can tell that nubbin is not near as big as what that primary ear is. So we will harvest this primary ear when it gets ready where that gets nice and brown. And we will leave that nubbin and we may pick it and give it to the chickens or we may not. Normally they don't fill out enough to warrant, to, you know, harvesting and trying to cook with it. The old timers used to give the nubbins to the mules or either to the chickens, so there was some use for it. But in this day and time, we don't use the nubbins a lot. So this right here, let's go down here and see if we can find another one. Here's a couple right here. So this, this ear, this stalk right here only has one on it. It doesn't have a nubbin on it. It's just got one primary ear. And it's like it's filled out pretty good. I want you to look at that silk there, nice and brown. We like that. We know it's ready when we see that nice brown silk. So we just simply pull it down twist it a little bit and there we got it now i'll go show you how we get that husk off and get the silk off now i love to grill my field corn so what i'll do is i'll remove the husk there and get the silk off and i'll show you how to do that i like to use a good thin spine knife for this you can tell right here this knife here is a real thin spine now this is an old hickory knife usa made knife that i really like for this process now here we have a camping knife. Now this is probably a $150 camping knife that uh, really works well for camping. But you see how wide the spine is there? That doesn't lend, its well, lend itself well to what we're doing today. We need a good slicing knife. And that's the reason this little old hickory works good for that. So I place it on the cutting board. A lot of people silk it from the top, but I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do and I silk it from the bottom. So I go in there where it starts coming down at where the base of the corn is on this cutting board and I just simply cut through. I look there and I got a little bit more I can cut off there so I'm going to get another quarter to a half inch and I know I've gotten to the bottom of that uh, corn. The reason I do it like this is because we grow organic corn and every now and then we are out to get a corn earworm up at the top. So by silking from the bottom up, if I see I have a worm up there, then I can simply cut that off and I don't worry about contaminating all the worm feces and whatever in the bottom and the rest of the corn. So we can take it here and start peeling it back. See there, this ear of corn is nice and clean, no worms. Got all the silks off of there. Now when we get the silks off, I go ahead and I cut that very tip off. There you have it. The only process left is silking. To silk it, we take a good USA made corn silking brush. And these things used to be easy to find back 20, 30 years ago, but they got they're really hard to find. But we like the USA made corn silk and brush. You put it on there and you just go with the action back and forth. And as I do that, I'm turning that ear cob, ear corn. I do that a few times. Not most of those sips off. 
You're not gonna get every one of them, but you wanna get most of them. Sometimes I'll do it like that. Go back, pull some more off like, like that. All right. Now, I will wash that. I will slather some olive oil on it, and I will lay it on the grill, and I will cook it. And man, you talking about some fine eating. So a few videos ago, I was talking about this South Anna butternut squash variety here that's kind of taking over this plot here. And you can see we're starting to get some pretty, pretty big fruits there. That's a nice looking butternut squash there. Still a little green, still got a ways to go for it kind of turns nice and tan color and cures up and vines die back. But I've also got another row of winter squash planted in here. And had I known that the South Anna was gonna just try to take over the world, uh, I might've done things a little bit differently, but it has worked out all right so far. So right on the edge here, cause you can't tell the difference now, everything just, just looks like pumpkins or squash. But we planted a row of table ace acorn squash. Now I've grown table king and table queen in the past, never grown table ace. And these things are making a lot of acorn squash here let me get in here and show you now they still got a way to go to get bigger but we're getting at least three of these per plant sometimes four you can see some kind of hidden down in there and uh i love acorn squash you just cut them in half throw them in the oven real good eating and um so we're waiting on the, the kind of vines to die back on these and those stems to harden and we can come in and harvest these guys they're not the biggest acorn squash i've ever grown but it seems like the productivity is really really high with them and it you know who knows the productivity could have suffered a little bit once this butternut just kind of took over the world in here but so far we're pretty happy with our production on the table ace let's see if we can Get in here. Find a few more. See, so there's a one down in there. There's some nice ones right there. So, in addition to our butternut here, we ought to have a pretty decent acorn squash harvest in another month or so once all this dies back. If you like growing acorn squash out there, tell me what varieties you like. If you did in the table queen, the table king, or maybe you tried this table ace. So far, this table ace looks like it's gonna be my favorite and a good keeper for years to come. Look at what we got here, folks. Our old Avalon white triple sweet corn is ready. We're out here picking it right now. Let me show you. I done got three rows knocked out. Working on some more here. And you see that silk right there get all crispy and brown like that? You know it's time to pull it. And uh, a pretty good harvest on this uh, variety here. Really, really happy with it. We've been getting about a little over one of them seven gallon buckets there per row. So we're going to do a low country boil tonight, put some of that in there. We're going to put some in the fridge, eat later this week. We're going to sell a little bit. And Miss Hoss, aka Mama, gonna cream some and put it in the freezer for us let me show you what one of these good old ears looks like right here that's a pretty big ear of corn right there get it off of there walk over here see what it looks like give me just a second here there we go look there nice nice big old filled out kernels right there pretty old white sweet corn and this stuff is mighty good and sweet it's a triple sweet variety so it's got some um of each kind of kernel on it. it's got some of them kind of standard kernels some of the sugary enhanced kernels and some of the triple sweet or excuse me some of the super sweet kernels on it so it's got kind of an heirloom corn flavor but got some of that real good sweetness to it too and uh i'll definitely be growing this again you can see we ain't had any problems with worms I sprayed that spinosad on there Kept the worms off our corn and just couldn't be happier with our harvest here. And uh, still got eight or so rows to go. Gonna get a lot of corn out of this little 30 by 35 plot. 
figured it was time to give everybody a little update on our sunflower challenge 2020 we've got our american giant hybrid sunflowers here we had a little competition with a few other youtube channels um cog hill farm deep south homestead the naked hog adler farms and four kids in a farm now we got a little bit of late start because we only thought that was fair but uh these things are growing like crazy they're probably i'd say about three and a half foot tall now we're still behind everybody because we started a little later but we're catching up quick i've seen everybody else's and uh, i got good faith that we're gonna catch up we got that drip right there on them puppies we've been feeding them you about can't give these sunflowers too much water they'll soak it up pretty good and a little top secret tip here we just came through and trimmed all them bottom leaves we want to promote taller growth here this is a competition to see who can grow the tallest sunflower so that's what we're trying to do here we're not trying to grow a bunch of leaves on the side we're just trying to go grow real tall sunflowers now the big question is will trimming those bottom leaves also affect the eventual head size that i get because that's another thing we're going for here is who can grow the biggest sunflower head hopefully not and uh we're still pumping some fertilizer to them trying to promote a good strong root system because we know we're liable to get a hurricane in here and uh, that could ruin our sunflower challenge but we got those bottom limbs took off there trying to promote more vertical growth instead of lateral growth and hopefully that's going to be a winning solution for us so y'all go check out those other channels see how their sunflowers are coming along i still got a long way to go and uh but we're we're, we're uh we're pretty confident here they're growing fast enough and hopefully these things get on up to about 15 foot tall or so or more before it's all over with